Japan's female robot has shocked the entire world as she's soon to replace a human as a news anchor. A recent article in the Wall Street Journal says that Erica, an android made to look like a 23-year-old woman, could soon start working as a TV news anchor in Japan. The head of the Intelligent Robotics Laboratory at Osaka University, Hiroshi Ishiguru, who created Erica, says that the android will eventually take the place of a human news anchor on the airwaves. Let's find out more. Even though the day when every home will have its own robot is still a long way off, the Japanese have a very positive attitude toward humanoids. Erica likes to go to the movies and watch cartoons. She has always wanted to go to Southeast Asia, and she thinks a man who's easy to talk to would be the best match for her. Still, she's less open than usual when you ask her how old she is. As most females are, so female robots are going to be no less, right? So that's a question that could be seen as rude. As expected, the answer was, I'd rather not say. During conversations, Erica tilts her head to the side as her fellow conversation partner shifts sideways and tries to make the conversation more friendly. Erica follows his every move with her eyes. All of this is pretty scary, but if Japan's newest generation of smart robots are ever going to be able to compete with humans as conversation partners, maybe everything's going as it should. Erica, who's 23 years old, is the most technologically advanced humanoid ever made. She's the result of a collaboration between the universities of Osaka and Kyoto and the Advanced Telecommunications Research Institute International, or ATR. The group is led by Hiroshi Ishiguru, whom we introduced you to before, and he's a professor at Osaka University's Intelligent Robotics Laboratory. He may be best known for making Geminoid Hi-1 an android that looks just like him, right down to his trademark black leather jacket and a Beatles mop top made from his own hair. The Geminoid Hi-1 was on display at the Intelligent Robotics Laboratory at Osaka University. Erika, on the other hand, looks and sounds a lot more like a person than Ishiguru's Silicon Double or Geminoid F, which was his first humanoid robot. She can't walk without help, but she has made a lot of progress with her speech and she can now understand and answer questions. Every time she says something, her face changes in ways that are eerily similar to what a person would do. Ishiguro says that Erika is the most beautiful and smart humanoid robot that exists anywhere in the world. Ishiguro said that he was pacing back and forth in his office in the ATR's robotics laboratory and thought, the average face shows the beauty principle. So what he did was, he took pictures of 30 beautiful women, mixed up their features, and used the average of each to design the eyes, nose, and so on. So simply, the average face shows what beauty is all about. That means she should be appealing to all kinds of people all over the world. She's an improved version of Geminoid F, which was again another of Ishiguro's characters who appeared in the film Sayonara, which was directed by Koji Fukada and based on a play with the same name. That same year, Sayonara came out. Geminoid F's role in the movie made him the first humanoid actor in the world. The movie, which also starred Briarly Long and was set in rural Japan after a nuclear disaster. Even though there have been robots and movies for almost as long as there have been movies, Erika didn't use human actors like C-3PO or motion capture technology like other robots in movies like Sonny from iRobot. The Japanese have become very used to robots in their daily lives over the past year, even though every home won't have its own Erika for a long time. In April, two locations of the Mitsubishi UFJ Financial Group started using robots instead of people to answer customer questions. Pepper, a home robot that looks like a person, became available to buy by individuals in June. Each batch of Pepper sold out in less than a minute. In 2022, Kirobi, a friend robot that had been on the International Space Station, came back to Earth. During the time it was there, Kirobi made history by being the first robot to talk to a human while both were in space. And last summer, guests at the Huiz Ten Bosch theme park near Nagasaki could stay in a hotel where almost all of the workers were robots. This included the people who worked at the front desk, the concierge desk, and the cloakroom. But there were also people around to help if there were any problems. But the fact that people use robots more and more in their daily lives has also raised ethical questions that haven't been fully answered yet. SoftBank, the company that made Pepper, thought it would be a good idea to include a clause in its user agreement that says people who own the device can't use it for sexual acts or other obscene behavior. Ishiguru thinks it's too early to warn about a bad future in which machines are abused or become abusers themselves. He thinks that this situation will not happen. 
I don't think there's anything wrong with that, he said. Before we can make a market for robots, we have to admit that they're already a big part of our lives. If we can't do it, this discussion about ethics is pointless. The Nomura Research Institute recently put out a paper that looked into the future by saying that by the year 2035, about half of all jobs in Japan might be done by robots. Ishiguru says that I think Nomura is onto something, and I agree with him. Even though Japan's population is likely to drop by a lot over the next few decades, people there still expect that their standard of living will stay the same. He thinks that this is a place where robots can help. He thinks that Erica gives him a chance to challenge the idea that robots will always be strange, and he plans to take advantage of this chance. An experiment that took place in an Osaka department store for two weeks and has androids work as salespeople showed that people may soon start to trust them more than humans. Video from The Guardian shows that the first guests are about to arrive at the robot hotel in Japan. He says that robots can act as a mirror to help us learn more about ourselves. We see human-like qualities in machines and start to wonder about the true nature of the human heart, about desire, consciousness, and intention, says the author. There's a chance that seeing Erica face to face will be scary. When Ishiguru asked this person to start a conversation in her native Japanese, she was at a loss of words for a moment because she could show a wide range of emotions through dozens of pneumatic actuators built into her silicone skin. Experts think that spontaneous speech conversations may only be a few years away, but for now, a perfect conversation with Erica needs to focus on a set number of topics. Instead of making robots that are almost human but not quite, which can make people uncomfortable when they move and talk, developers will need to give robots what the Japanese call sonzaikan, or more human-like presence. This is the only way to make it happen. Ishiguro says that the more they look and talk like people, the easier it will be for us to get over our fears, which are often used for dramatic effect in science fiction movies. They'll have to be able to guess a person's intentions and wants and then use an internal system to match some or all of those intentions and wants in their answer, he says. They'll have to be able to do this without any help from the outside world. He waits for a moment before asking how this could change the way humans and robots interact. It's a rhetorical question. It means that one day, people and robots will be able to love each other, he says. Thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned for more.